children have been enjoying the best. Nutrilac, adapted to suit your little one's dietary needs. Nutrilac has always taken care of your children and brings nature's best plus vitamins and minerals to give your baby the strength and protection it needs. Zinc, the power behind your baby's intelligence, helping your little one grow up smarter and wise. Selenium, the protector of your baby's immunity so that he can fight disease. Vitamin D, to give your baby healthy bones and teeth and to make him grow strong and powerful. Discover these three superpowers in the new Nutrilac Immunoprotect formula. For inquiries about Nutrilac Immunoprotect, contact Fawani Enterprise Banjul on 7191815. Nutrilac, everything your baby needs to grow. Welcome to GRTS News, broadcasting for viewers in the Gambia and around the world and in our top stories this hour. The Minister of Agriculture presides over the validation of the National Food Systems Dialogue to promote nutrition and food security in the Gambia. The Ministry of Health receives computers and other IT equipment to boost this ministry's operational system amid efforts to curb COVID-19 in the Gambia. In sports, Team Gambia joins the opening ceremony of the Tokyo 2021 Olympics with track queen Gina Bars holding the national flag in the inaugural march through the iconic Olympic Stadium. Plus, 14 Zimbabwe nationals deported by the United Kingdom arrives in Harare. And former South African President Jacob Zuma granted compassionate leave from prison to attend his younger brother's funeral. That's the top of the news and much more coming ahead. Thanks for joining us.
And now the news in detail. The Minister of Agriculture has presided over the validation forum of the, Na of the National Food Systems Dialogue at the Ksar Dauda Keraba Conference Center in Bijilo. The document seeks to promote nutrition and food security in the Gambia to meet the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals target by 2030. Fatajan Mbai reports. The Ministry of Agriculture with partners has validated the National Food Systems Pathway. The document is henceforth a working tool to guide the country's drive for food self-sufficiency capturing the food chain. Ami Fabre is the Agriculture Minister. I challenge you to study them in detail and give them a rigorous critique. Let me remind you that from today, the pathway will become a national document. If you don't give it a due diligence, it deserves the outcome will be poor. However, looking at the different experience and the specializations in this room, because uh, to be candid, the caliber of people I've seen here today can do justice to this document because I have all the directors here and other stakeholders and I know this document can be improved today. The Gambia imports more than 50% of the food it consumes. And since it is one thing to produce food and to access food, the National Food Systems Pathway is relevant in addressing the challenges. The Agriculture Minister, Madam Fabre, further explains. The National Pathway consists of several milestones which contribute to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals agenda. 2030. The key milestones are 1. Increase access to land, financing and other productive resources for women and youth. 2. Increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the health delivery system. 3. Express sustainably the country's natural resource base. 4 double food production. Fifth, coordinate a harmonized policy environment that affects food systems. Sixth, increase private sector investment in the food system. And the seventh, respect regional and the international physical obligations by government of the Gambia. One key institution that supported the Gambia in the development of the National Food Systems Pathway is the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Serafin Wakana is the United Nations resident coordinator. The UN has supported the entire process thus far for working closely with the government of the Gambia at every step to ensure all relevant stakeholders were engaged and consulted. And as stated by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who will be convening the Food Systems Summit in September, this is a, a people's summit. The voices and ideas of women, men, youth, the most vulnerable, all those voices are crucial to the reshaping and future of our food systems. It is important to highlight the significance of finding green solutions as well as improve access to technology and reset our relationship. Other institutions which participated in the validation of the National Food Systems Pathway include the National Disaster Management Agency, the National Environment Agency and the Ministry of Local Government and Lands, as the availability of agricultural land remains a challenge in the realization of national food security. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Fatou Janimbai. In another development, the Ministry of Health on Friday received desktop computers, laptops, tablets and other accessories from the World Bank through the Gambia Essential Health Services Strengthening Project at the Central Medical Stores in Kotu. The gesture is meant to boost the Health Ministry's recording systems amid efforts to standardize operational systems and facilitate registration for COVID-19 vaccine recipients. Yasin Jiba has more. The Electronic Civil Registration and Statistics System is a major development set 
to transform the identification narrative and ease challenges faced by the Ministry of Health in recording births, deaths, marriages and divorce, creating a viable digital documentation process. Zambia has ever maintained its birth and death registration system manually, which of course is not without countless number of challenges. The imperfections and also duplicity of documentation, human errors. The delivery of important digital items including desktops, printers, laptops, scanners, tablets, solar bags, lamination machines and battery backups takes the registration program to a new high as officials move to enhance national health records. Receiving the donation at the Central Medical Stores in Bakotu, the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Health, Mohamed Lamin Jaite, said the equipment will boost the ministry's effort in the digitalization of data management process for bans and registration. This vision is now being boosted in a very significant and major way by this initial first significant step at the support of the World Bank to digitize our national birth registration and civil registration system in the country. PSJ thank the World Bank for their proactive efforts in supporting the Gambia government to meet its development objectives. From the World Bank Global CRVS program, Samuel Mills said the computing process will enhance timely access to data for informed decision making and management of programs in various health departments in the country. An electronic civil registration and vital statistics system has multiple benefits to the individuals and to the society as a whole. A birth certificate provides proof of age. It enables people to um, have access to essential services, whether it is healthcare, social protection services, or education. The computing of health records and registration is a crucial move that will significantly expand the production of data, enabling quick access, more sustainability in archiving and record keeping. For the news, this is Yasin Jima. Still on health matters, the non-communicable disease control unit of the Ministry of Health will support from tobacco control policy for Africa has held its quarterly media briefing on the activities of the tobacco control mechanisms in the country. The quarterly convergence is aimed at enforcing the Free Public Smoke Act of 2016, which restricts the use of tobacco in public places. Yasin Jiba has more again. The Tobacco Control Unit has been implementing strategies to raise awareness on the dangers of smoking in public places as they launch a situation analysis on the enforcement of smoke-free environments across public places in the Gambia. The defeat NCD is working with the Ministry of Health to support their, their response to NCD nationally and the tobacco control is one of the strategic areas that if we are able to address that, we will be able to say that we are making progress around uh, non-communicable diseases. So I have seen since my arrival and working with the, the unit here that the unit has been making the intentional effort to control tobacco in the country. Tobacco causes severe health hazards and diseases such as tuberculosis with recent statistics pointing to more fatalities from smoking. The Deputy Director of Health Promotion, Sanjali Trawali, said engaging people on the dangers of tobacco by raising awareness is the surest way to ensure people understand and accept its consequences. In order to control uh, tobacco, we are employing several strategies. One of these is uh, educating people. But we realize that uh, educating people, for them to understand the danger associated with smoking, will not be enough. Even some people, no matter how much you inform them, educate them, or what, they will not. 
Mr. Trawali noted the deployment of action committees in the region as a strategy move to enforce the implementation of the 2016 Tobacco Act. We used to see the manufactured cigarette, a single stick contains 7,000 different chemicals. A single stick, 7,000 different chemicals. And uh, seizure, if you are exposed to seizure, like we are here, for one hour, it means that each of us smoke uh, 100 sticks. A host of partnership programs are now being driven to support the Gambia's response to tobacco control policies. For the news, this is Yasin Jiba. Away from that, more philanthropists continue to support victims of the devastating windstorms that ravaged lives and properties across the Gambia. The Eastern Lions Community Development Trust, a diaspora and charitable organization in Faraba Banta, Kumbu East, is the latest organization to support the victims with a special support package providing essential food items to affected families. Kajeta Juara tells us more. More philanthropists are moving to support victims of devastating windstorms that ravage lives and property across the Gambia. The Eastern Lions Community Development Trust, a diaspora and community charitable organization in Faraba Bantang, Combo East, is the latest organization coming to the aid of disaster victims with a special support package providing essential food items to affected families. The gesture saw multiple beneficiaries receiving bags of rice and cash donations as well as special certificates of appreciation to the group's local partners in development. Speaking during the presentation, the ambassador of the association, Omar Sadi Khan, said the gesture is meant to enhance the livelihoods of rainstorms, disaster victims. Today here we are uh, gathered again to give out another donation to uh, disaster affected people, that is the flood affected people of uh, last week's uh, wind storm. So today too we are giving out a cash amount of $23,000 and uh, eight, eight, uh, eight bags of rice to uh, affected persons. Mr. Sadi Khan promised his association's continuous support to needy Gambians and disaster victims. Our intention is to reach out to people all over the country and even beyond if we can. So what we stand for now is to serve our people, to give helping hand to our people in need. Beneficiaries including the headmaster of Faraba Arabic School, Karamu Jassi, thank the Eastern Lions Community Development Trust for its timely support to all affected communities needing urgent help in Faraba Bantang. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Khadija Tujuara. In a similar gesture, the Kuwaiti-based humanitarian agency Direct Aid has distributed bulls to Muslims in the country as part of the organization's support to needy Muslims during the Feast of Eid al-Adha, locally known as Tubaski. Khadija Jalo has, the, has more of that story. Eid al-Adha, locally known as Tubaski, is another event that Muslims around the world here and share with the less privileged in society to ensure that all Muslims enjoy the feast. The Kuwaiti-based humanitarian body has been supportive during this time of the year. Direct Aid Banyulunun Center Manager Njai Ultalib Haidara highlighted. We usually used to do this program every year. Today, uh, alhamdulillah, we have uh, around 226 cow distribution in the whole country in Gambia. Some are in Congo, some are in Provence. And uh, every family uh, benefits from a uh, large quantity of meat for this uh, eat for Muslim uh, people. Adam Asawane, whom I went with to witness the slaughtering and distribution of bulls that were given to Govi, Gadhog, Lillahe Association and Paralympians, 
said the support is among a range of interventions that the organization is championing to improve lives and livelihoods in the continent, which include orphanage homes, building mosques, and providing free health service. Beneficiaries Salijaj of Lilai Association, Musambai of Govi, Haji Drame Paralympian, and Dudulung of Gadhok all hail direct aid for the annual support explaining that they could not afford to buy rams due to their economic status. Committee. So on behalf of the committee, I would want to sincerely thank the organization that is Direct Aid for always catering for us, people with disability. Uh, last year we were here, we gathered to witness the same occasion and that is what is happening here today. So on behalf of everyone here, we have our senior members here, we have senior colleagues here. I would want to thank you and hope, you know, the partnership and the great relationship that is between us and the direct aid will continue. People with disabilities are at a great disadvantage. They have, they have no much access to, 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 to public services. Ram sacrifice lasts for three days into the idyll at her. Kadija Tujalo reporting for GRTS News. Time now to take our first break. The sports news is up next in just a moment. Prices impossible to miss the Butty Days. Butty Days is the unmissable appointment of Butty Mud. From the 17th to the 31st of July, take advantage of exceptional discounts up to 50% off on several product family. The best quality price ratio for the best construction is at Butty Mud. So don't wait anymore. Let's hit the road for the Butty Days. Butty Mud, everything for construction from foundation to finishing. Stay home as much as possible, but if you must go out, be sure to wear your face mask at all times. Nenfeke ni tokir, wae sa inyore gen ni sosu ni face mask si chiwato wunek. Nsa kata na face wall kono, bari ni ata rambe funte la fana na face mask all dung wato bela. You can now benefit from up to 60 minutes for free by using your AfriMoney account. You need to subscribe to the Stay Safe Mix Bundle using your AfriMoney account and receive free AfriSell to AfriSell minutes valid for 7 days. To activate, dial star 777 hash, select buy data bundles and pay. $150 is only to enjoy 1.5GB, 60 minutes of on net calls and 3000 SMSs valid for 7 days. Or $10 is to only enjoy 40MB, 2 minutes of on net calls and 100 SMSs valid for 7 days. Where AfriSell goes, uh, nobody dares to follow. Dares to follow. In a country always thirsty for more, a team of superheroes with special powers unite to redefine the way we are connected. Big Barber and Bagas steps up your communication with the DOK service, giving you 1,000 minutes of talk time to one special person for $150 only, valid for one month. Enjoy your talk time. Type SUB and send by SMS to 135 to activate the TOK service. Afrisol got office with the power to change the world. Welcome back. Team Gambia has joined the opening ceremony of the Tokyo 2021 Olympics today with track queen Gina Bass and sprinter Ibrahim Kamara jointly holding the national flag in the inaugural march through the iconic Olympic Stadium. Hosts 
hosting athletes from around the world. The Olympic Stadium was lit up brightly with different, in, different lights and colors as competing nations, including the Gambia, took part in the much-anticipated opening which unveils the long-awaited games cancelled last year due to the global pandemic. COVID-19 is still a major scare in the games as several athletes test positive for the virus ahead of today's opening, but organizers saw their dreams come true as the Olympics finally kicked off this morning in Tokyo. Africa's track queen Gina Bass has was looking forward or, or rather is looking forward to set new records in multiple sprinting events during the games. We wish the entire team of the Gambia the best of luck and a fruitful Olympic campaign. Still in sports, the long-awaited Tokyo Olympics opens today. Well, an increase in a number of COVID-19 cases remains there. Wouldn't be a host of tech milestones that the organizers and broadcasters hope will keep the judges on track and the audience cheering at home. The application of new technologies like AI and AR to international sports competition will be changing the games and the experiences of millions of viewers. Details in the CGTN report. After uh, expectations, uh, the 2020 Olympic Games are about to get underway, about to have that official kickoff, and then we wait to see whether that tide will turn that we've seen perhaps at other Olympic Games in the past where the build-up has been uh, hit by controversies and, and scandals, and suddenly uh, once the Games start, once uh, the opening ceremony uh, begins and uh, the sport then begins, that then the focus changes once again, certainly organisers will be praying that will be the case. Certainly, uh, I was walking around the stadium, it was around uh, lunchtime when that happened, and uh, certainly there were you know, more people out and about uh, trying to soak up what atmosphere they can. But I went to one or two of the uh, event venues today, and uh, it's just so heartbreaking seeing the venues completely empty. Of course, this will be a game played uh, in front of empty stadiums and arenas, uh, fa local fans uh, only recently finding out that, uh, that they would not be allowed to partake uh, in this games and certainly that's going to be the case at this opening ceremony uh, as well. Uh, but if, so this is all going to come down to you know whether the TV uh, games will be able to change that public opinion, and of course that will depend very much. You would think uh, whether there will be perhaps early medals for Japan, and if that happens, that perhaps that will galvanise a little extra feeling towards this Olympic Games. Uh, but as I say, you know, as we hear at the opening ceremony, a surreal atmosphere, very quiet, other than these protesters here, and certainly organisers still have a lot to do in order to win over that sceptical public. Here we are, one year after uh, expectations, uh, the 20... We will take another quick break. When we return, we'll take a look at news from beyond our borders. Welcome back. Zimbabwean nationals deported by the United Kingdom have arrived in Harare. They are the first batch of uh, rejected convicted criminals offenses. CGTN's Ferrari Mukatawa reports. The chartered flight with the 14 deportees on board. Due to safety concerns, media was barred from getting any closer or filming the passengers disembark. The returnees have been whisked away to a COVID-19 quarantine facility where they'll remain in isolation in line with the country's COVID-19 prevention protocols. That meant that family members who had come to the airport could not see their relatives. A visibly distraught mother had hoped to welcome a son she lost saw more than a decade ago back home. When they eventually meet, it will be a bittersweet reunion. It's a pain in my heart just because it's somebody. It's my breadwinner. It's my breadwinner. So you don't think it is right for him to come back home? It's, it's wrong. It's not good for me. It is not good for me forever. Like others facing deportation, her son has his wife and children in the United Kingdom, a split that activists have been battling. The UK government are not considering the children left behind, the impact on the family. We know that children have experienced trauma, um, their education has suffered, they're wet in the bed, 
they're asking, are we next? Are we going to be deported and to be stripped of one of your parents and never see them again? It's absolutely atrocious. It's a human rights uh, abuse. The people being deported were convicted of crimes in the United Kingdom. Zimbabwean authorities have downplayed the significance of the action. Any government in the world has the right to deport any foreigner from its country. So this is what happened. It's not unique to the United Kingdom. It is uh, recently, last week, we had about 220 Zimbabweans who were deported from South Africa. So as the government, we welcome them back home. We do everything in our power to make sure that these uh, uh, deportees are integrated into the society once they arrive here. A total of 150 Zimbabweans face deportation from the UK, with thousands relocated due to economic turmoil at home. Farai Mwakutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe. Former President Jacob Zuma, who was jailed this month, was led to South Africa's worst ride in years, has attended his younger brother's funeral on Thursday after he was granted compassionate leave. Security was scaled up within Kandala with soldiers patrolling the area and police vehicles stationed at strategic positions as Zuma joined his family members during the funeral services. A statement from the government said he was later taken back to prison in the afternoon. 79-year-old Zuma is serving a 15-month jail term for contempt of court. Protests erupted after Zuma handed over himself on July 7th and later widened into protest by looting and vandalism. And now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic, the Ethiopian Ministry of Health have announced that it has administered more than 2 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines so far, and it has plans to double that number in the few weeks. CGTN's Gurum Chala has more. Ethiopia was one of a handful of African countries that is in March 1st began administering COVID-19 vaccinations to its citizens. Now, the nation has announced more than 2 million citizens have at least got their first dose. Still, our priority for vaccination will be people who are vulnerable to the virus due to their working situations. Therefore, we will continue giving priority to police and security forces, customs agents, employees of prisons and courts, teachers at all levels, as well as hotel and tourism service actors and media people. Ethiopia received an additional 400,000 AstraZeneca vaccine dose through a COVAX facility. The U.S. government also donated 450,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine a few days back. These are expected to boost efforts to vaccinate as many Ethiopians as possible. <laughs> I'm very happy about getting this chance. My work environment endangers my health, especially when it comes to me being near to catch the virus. Considering all, I'm thankful for the opportunity I was given to take my first dose. The number of vaccine doses is still too low compared to the population size we have in the country, and I'm delighted to get this vaccination. I say until people get vaccinated, they should continue wearing their face masks, use sanitizers, and keep a reasonable distance to avoid the spread of the pandemic. Still, the battle against the pandemic is far from over here in Ethiopia. The country has confirmed the presence of the Alpha and Beta COVID-19 variants and highly suspects the spread of the Delta variant. To find out or assure ourselves whether the Delta variant exists in Ethiopia, we have just started investigations across the country. However, taking into consideration how widespread the variant is in so many nations across the world, we expect its presence here. And for that reason, we insist our communities continue practicing all the known preventive measures. Ethiopia is also providing rapid COVID-19 testing services which can deliver results within 20 minutes for citizens free of charge. Government-owned health facilities across the country are now offering that service. Groom Jala Ethiopia. 
Before we end this newscast, a quick look at our top stories. The Minister of Agriculture has presided over the validation of the National Food Systems Dialogue to promote nutrition and food security in the Gambia. The Ministry of Health has received computers and other IT equipment to boost the Ministry's operational system amid efforts to curb COVID-19 in the Gambia. In sports, Team Gambia have joined the opening ceremony of the Tokyo 2021 Olympics with track queen Gina Bas holding the national flag in the inaugural march through the iconic Olympic Stadium. Plus, the 14 Zimbabwe nationals deported by the United Kingdom have arrived in Harare. And former South African President Jacob Zuma have been granted compassionate leave from prison to attend his younger brother's funeral. Well, that does it for this edition of GRTS News. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. Do stay with us for more details.